what was your favorite sport and how did you end up settling in on football? I would, I'd probably say basketball. You know, um, I really played high school football because all my friends played. And I didn't want to be that odd man. I was just sitting there in the stands watching my boys play. So, you know, going to my sophomore year, I quit the football team. Oh, wow. I walked up, I, I quit, I said, listen, I'm, I don't want to play football. I'm a basketball player. I don't want to go to college and play basketball. Get stuck, stop wishing, start doing, start living, start a moving. Show me your animal, show me your animal instinct, show me your animal instinct. What's up everybody, LeVar Arrington here. And welcome into another exciting edition of Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. And it's interesting, Up On Game came from an origin and one of the people a part of that origin is with me today Played for the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was drafted number eight overall. We were in the same draft class, in fact, in the 2000 draft. Ended up playing for the New York Giants. Had an illustrious career there and won a Super Bowl. One of the, well, possibly most memorable Super Bowls in Super Bowl history, beating an undefeated New England Patriots team. He iced them, as they would say. He had to ice them out, ice them, cool them down, catch and touchdown in the game. Uh, he finished out with the New York Jets. Well, actually finished out with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, played for the Jets, finished with the Steelers. Ended up coaching for a little bit with yep. the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, yep. And now has transitioned into, here we go, one of the original members of the Up On Game cast. That's right, he has transitioned into the media game. I almost felt like Plexico Burris. That's who it is, Plexico Burris, Super Bowl champ, could have done the interview on me. But yeah. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna I'm do the honors of this. I appreciate you coming on to the show. We are in Norfolk, Virginia. This is a beautiful thing. Uh, Myself, Pacematic has made it possible for you to be here and for us to do this wonderful show on site in your hometown of your home area uh, in Virginia Beach, Norfolk, Tidewater area. Seven cities, baby. Seven, five, seven. Yep. First of all, what's it like being home on this side? What's the feeling? Home is home, man. It's, you know, you, you feel different, you know, walking around here. You know, uh, being born and raised here and, you know, just just everything. I mean, it's still one of my favorite places in the world to come home to. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just that feeling of, of just being back to my roots and dreaming and trying to go out and accomplish all these things. And that, you know, that whole mindset of everything that I want, ever wanted to do started right here. How cool is it? We're looking at this logo and outside of TJ Hushmanzada and myself, that logo means something to you. What, how, how cool is that to be a part of something that's continuing to grow and you're an original piece of, of everything that's taking place? Man, you know, when you pick up the phone and call me, I asked if I wanted to, you know, to do the, uh, be a part of the show. And I was like, uh, you know, man, I don't really, really didn't want to transition in the media. It was just one of those things that I was doing, you know, here and there, you know, a little bit when I finished playing. But for you, and you know, we sat down and had a conversation of what the show was going to be about. And, you know, I was saying to myself, and I asked you, I said, is it going to be, you know, authentic? And I think that was the, the main reason why um, I decided to, to come along. And uh, man, it's been a journey, man. It, it's been, 10 times better than I ever thought it would have, uh, would be. And now we're looking at what, three years just passed. Uh, I had a three year anniversary as we would call it. And man, I, 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 look to, I look forward to it every Saturday from 12 to two, cause you know, you have a voice and, and, and you can go out and you know, uh, you know, teach and you know, uh, inform people of things that you know, they have no idea about what you know, football life and up on game is about. 
And we try to cover every aspect in life, and that's why we, you know, ultimately name the show Up On Game. Yeah, that's fly. Um, how has it been transitioning from being a, a world-class athlete, Super Bowl champ, to being a media personality? It's, uh, you know what, uh, when I was playing, I, I, I really wasn't too fond of the media because, you know, because of how, they you know, depicted I, yeah, you. yeah, but I, because of how I came across and if they asked, if they asked me a question, I was always going to give them an honest answer. And my coach would say, hey, you don't have to be so uh, honest. honest with the media. <laughs> right. You don't have to give them everything. I said, well, they asked me a question, I'm going to tell them the truth. But, uh, you know, being on the flip side of it and, you know, it's, for, for me, as, as sometimes it's, it's tough to criticize guys in our profession because we know how hard it is. Yeah. And we try to, you know, break it down in detail to the, the way that we get our point across. And I think we do a fantastic job of that. And, uh, you know, it, it's something that I didn't think that I would get into when I finished playing football. But, hey, man, now that I, now that I love it, and uh, uh, I'm transitioning into media, transitioning into being a, a, a world champion chef. You think you can cook better than me, but... I do. No, you cannot. I think I can. You cannot. That's not going to I believe happen. I can. Uh, you know, just, you know, just, you know, just trying to dot every I across every T. Everything that I want to do is all about a mindset, putting yourself to it, and getting to work on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's what it's you know, all been about is like, what do I want to do? What am I passionate about? Because if, if I got to wake up in the morning and it feels like, oh, I got to go do this, that is not how it should be. Yeah. It should be everything that you do, you do it from the heart and you be passionate about it. And it's just fun to do every single day. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now let's hit rewind. Let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. Plexico Burrs. <sighs> He's born. He's the longest child, <laughs> infant baby ever born in history, even longer than Shaquille O'Neal at a whopping five foot five inches when, when you were born. What was that like being five foot five as, as a, what was that? Well, no, how, uh, how, man. how, were you a, were you you know a long what? baby man? What man, was I was, I was, man, um, when I was 12 years ago, I was in the sixth grade and I was six feet tall. I wore size 12 shoe in the sixth grade. I'm saying to myself, you know, I said, I was 6'3 in the, in the yeah, sixth grade. Yeah. So there was a point in time in our life that I was yeah. taller than you. Yeah. yeah. Sixth grade, I was taller than you. You were. You were. But wow. I, grew, I grew four inches in a year. So I went from six feet to six four, from 12 to 13. I was saying to myself, I was already wearing a size 12 shoe. I say, hey man, if my feet keep going, I'm going to be walking around with some flippers. I, I thought I was going to have like a size 18 or 19, but. You wouldn't believe my feet haven't grown since I was 12 years old. Wow. So I, I still wear a size 12. And I went from six feet to six four in a year. Did you fall down? And I was just like this gangly. Was I was like, you know, I was like, I see a lot of water. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how I felt. And, uh, you know, lo and behold, man, I was gangly, scrawny, skinny kid. I was probably about 130 pounds Dang. at six four. And I think when I got to high school, my freshman year, I was probably like 160 pounds, but I was 6'5". And over the years, man, just, you know, kept playing football, basketball, running track. And my muscles, you know, caught up with my body, up. man. And it was just pretty much lights out from there. What was, what was your favorite sport and how did you end up settling in on <sighs> football? I would, I'd probably say basketball, you know. Um, I really played high school football because all my friends played. And I didn't want to be that odd man. I was just sitting there in the stands watching my boys play. So, you know, going to my sophomore year, I quit the football team. Oh, wow. I walked out, I, I quit, I said, listen, I'm, I don't want to play football. I'm a basketball player. I don't want to go to college, play basketball. And after that two of their practice, uh, the, the, uh, so my, it was my, too hot for you. Yeah, it was too hot. You didn't want to do it? Yeah, we was practicing. You wanted to be in the AC we, we, and we had, a, the we had a dirt field. It was, it was all crazy. And he came to my house, he said, uh, hey man, you're one of the best athletes I've, I've ever seen. I was like, man, I don't want to hear that, I'm playing basketball. And uh, my mom said, hey, just give it a chance. You know, I, I went back out there and it was just, it, it just came so natural to me. It was like I wasn't even trying, but basketball was, was my thing. Was my, That's the thing? Oh, uh, yeah. I'd have banged on you, though. Oh, no. 
I would have banged no, all no, on no, you, dog. No, so my coach came to me, uh, you know, my junior year, and he said, uh, he said, how many basketball players are 6'6"? Six, six? I said, everybody. And he said, how many wide receivers you know are 6'6"? Six, six? Zero. And, I was like, <laughs> and he was like, that's my point. And so uh, I trusted it, trusted him. And uh, I didn't really think I was that good of a player, to be honest with you. And I just started getting all these letters from all these colleges. And I'm like, yo, I don't even want to play football with play basketball. And it, one thing just led to another. I kept, I kept getting better, kept getting better. And when it came for me to make a decision to go to college, I was just like, I just had to go with what I thought my gift was yeah. over my love. And, and that's a tough decision for a, a young man to make at 18. let it go, right? And I'm like, man, I love the game of basketball, but football just comes to me so naturally. Yeah. And, um, and I made my decision based off of that and my high school coach, man, and you know, went for it. You end up at Michigan State. This is Sparta. Sparty on, baby. Sparty so, on. You, you go play for the team that we used to whoop when they came to State College. And, one uh, time, one time. Don't, don't get carried I only away. played against y'all one time at State College. We whooped y'all. I, I enjoyed it, too. Um, <laughs> we didn't whoop y'all when we came to East Lansing. No, no. You, you played for Nick Saban. Like, I did. What was that like to be on a major college football team? Did y'all know that Nick Saban was Nick Saban back then? Like, was he the Nick Saban that everybody speaks on? Like, may be considered the greatest college football coach of all time. Um, what was your experience? I mean, looking back at it, um, to how he was then and, and to where he's at now, I will always say that he, he's a phenomenal ball coach. He's a great football coach. And I, you know, that, 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 that would never be disputed. But you know, to see him go to where he is now, you didn't see that you know, 30 years, 25 years ago when I was at Michigan State. But he was always down to the very last detail of the defense. Uh -huh. And I think that's one of the things that, 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 that I noticed right off the bat was how he was just detailed on defense. And that has just transitioned with him and never left. And just look at the seasons that he had, the players that he's had defensively, offensively. And he's still coaching the same technique that he was coaching us 25 years ago. So it just shows that, you know, if you have a great coach and you just believe in what they're doing, you can accomplish great things. And he had, he had a lot of great athletes, four or five Highland Trophy winners. But I, I never foresaw him. Um, you know, go, being where he is at now. And he left us and went to LSU, ended up not even coaching us in that bowl game. We right. played in Florida at uh, um, January in 2000. Citrus Bowl. Citrus Bowl, yep. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, record, man. record day. Oh, man. Yeah. Has the record been broken yet? The record has not been broken. What was it? What was your stats? Uh, 1,385 yards and three touchdowns. Nice. Yeah. And uh, that was my last college football game. <laughs> That's a wrap. Uh, Pack it up. It's time hey, to me, go. Let me ask you this. Uh, they say Michigan State's a basketball school. What? What would your? Did that? Did that ever? Did you? Were you ever attracted to the dark side? Draymond brought his tail out to the football field and tried to play tight end. He's, he's, not, a, he's not a football player. No. no he's, he's not a football player. No, nah, he didn't look I mean, like one. Did, yeah, didn't I don't have any problem with people saying that Michigan State is a basketball school because they've, they've had so much success. Uh, Izzo's a Hall of Fame coach. We won a national championship when I was there in 2000. And just look at what they've done over the last 25 years. Us, we've probably won the Big Ten maybe four or five times. Had we went to the Rose Bowl. But we haven't been able to, uh, you know, be one of those elite programs like Alabama or Clemson or yeah. one of those things. I don't think that'll never happen. But just just being in that conference is just is is tough enough as it, in itself. I think every year we start. I mean, we got three or four teams that's in the top ten ranked mm -hmm. nationally, mm -hmm. and it's tough to recruit guys to get them to go to Michigan State unless they grow up that way. Yeah. Or they're from home. 
or they just want to be in green and white because it's tough to compete with Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State, yeah. Notre Dame, and all those schools in the Midwest to get, yeah. to get guys to go to East Lansing. So if you go to East Lansing, like, you really want to be there. Like, you really want to go Is that there. what you really wanted to do? Well, Florida was my first was my, was my right. first crew option. Crew Thick. Yeah. Shots yeah. out the Crew Thick. <laughs> No, Fred, so, 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 so that was my so, 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 so that was my my first option was to go to Florida, but I went on my visit to Michigan State, and it just for some reason, man, it just felt like this is where I was supposed to be, and it was freezing. I, I watched the uh, 1996 uh, Super Bowl the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers on my visit. Me, Musan Muhammad, Lavelle. And it was just the craziest thing, man. I had never been in Michigan in my life. I had never seen that much snow. But I just wanted to go there. When I came home, my mom was like, I'm going to Michigan State. And she was like, why are you going so far? I was like, well, you told me to go on a visit. Right. But, uh, man, I, I, I couldn't have had a b better time in my life, man, for those three years that I was there. It was, it was incredible. All right, before we touch on your pro career, let's let's touch on mom. You brought up moms. Yeah. I know how much she meant to you. Yeah, yeah. Was she, and, and, and rest her soul, um, was she your biggest motivation, your biggest inspiration? Talk, talk to us a little bit about how much she played a role in your, your achievements and your accomplishments. Man, she was just fierce. You know, she was a fierce competitor at, at everything, life. And she was a phenomenal athlete growing up. And I run into people when I'm home, some of her uh, 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 girlfriends and my, my family members. They say, hey, man, your mom was one of the coldest basketball players you ever huh. want to see. So she, she, led, she had the scoring record at Norfolk State for like 20 years, huh. you know, just being broken. And so she was a great athlete, man, but she was just a fierce competitor. And I believe that you know, she kind of saw me and her. Yeah. And so that's one of the things that you know, really inspired me and motivated me to, to see her have that joy of me going out and doing, you know, you know just, just, just what I was doing with God-given ability. And to see her, see, that, see her have that look on her face was just priceless because, uh, you know, I, I didn't know it then, but, you know, she knew that I was pretty good based on, you know, what, what she was looking at. And uh, it was just... You know, it, it motivated me to man to just be the best I could be at just basically everything. And uh, obviously, you know, growing up in the situation that we was in, you know, having that, you know, that opportunity to, you know, change our lives motivated me even more. So, um, yeah, man, she was just fierce, and you know, I just never want to let her down. Yeah. So that's what inspired me the most. That's awesome, man. So you yeah. make it to the league. You're the number eight overall pick. Mm -hmm. You go to the Steel City. I wish I could have traded you so you could have the, the Washington deal. And I, I know, and right? Pittsburgh. I mean, we could have switched up. It would have um, only been right. That would have been wonderful. Uh, <laughs> that would have been wonderful. Uh, but it didn't happen that way. You went to my hometown. I came somewhat to your hometown, your hometown team. And right. what was that like? Like, the, the experiences you had in Pittsburgh, what was that like? And how did that, you know, play a part in your development and what it led to you being when you went to New York? Man, you talk, you talk about a football town. I didn't know what fans were until I went to Pittsburgh. And um, I, really, I really didn't understand the history before I got there because, I mean, I mean, I, I knew Jerome and you know, Rod Wilson, I watched some of those guys play, Damani and... Um, uh, you were on the Cap team with Damani, yeah, I was I was on the team with Damani. And I remember being in high school, listen to John Madden call the games and just calling Damani Dawson's name up. And then when you get drafted and you, you get to a place like that, it's, so, it's a surreal feeling of like, man, I'm playing with Demonte Dawson. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Probably the greatest center I've ever played with, seen play, bar none. But just being in that culture, man, and understanding like the city, like the, the mentality of the team matched the city, and the, the city's mentality matched the team. And it's like straight, straight 
uh, fist and knuckles. It's, 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 a, it's a physical, it's a, it's a tough town, tough defense, tough defense and everything that they do fits the city like to the T. And I don't, I don't think I've witnessed anything like that, you know, uh, anywhere else. How did that play a part into what your experience was moving forward? New York. Oh, man. I mean, it was New York, New York. You went yeah. from one New York to the next New York. To be honest, to be honest I didn't want to leave. Okay. Um, you know, it, it was kind of a business decision for me. The, uh, Pittsburgh still is basically offering me the same contract that the Giants did, and I had to make a decision. because. So uh, why'd you leave? Because I was in the offense to where I kind of felt that I was kind of playing the shackles, so to speak. And, um, Second young, man. Yeah, we was in an I formation, you know, setback. Jerome, Run the ball. Jerome was getting the ball 30, 35 times. But then they giving the ball to Hines. Yeah. I'm going to get my five or six attempts. He's going to get his five, six attempts. Jerome's going to get the ball 30, 35 times. You're only getting 55 times, 55, right. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, snaps a game. And I just felt like I'd do more. And I sat down with Coach Kyle. I said, hey, man, you know, I want to do more, you know, in the offense, you know, get me into the slot, put me in some, you know, uh, some different positions instead of just playing the X all the time. And they said they weren't going to, you know, um, change the offense for one person. And I just made an executive decision to, to go to New York. It was a hell of a decision. Yeah, and I'm saying to myself, I said, listen, I mean, I understand the game. If I get a tight end on the back side and me that can help, you know, open up the field for me on the front side, then I can do some damage and then. So you, know, you went from Mark Bruner to Jeremy Shockey. I went, I went to Jeremy Shockey. And, it was, and he was honestly 99.9% .9 of the reason why I went to New York and we developed a relationship that was, that still is unbreakable. He's like my brother and he is tough as nails and I'm glad I went to New York to play with him because you know, we changed each other's lives at the same time. We were able to win a Super Bowl together. And, uh, man, we just, it, it just all went together. And, you know, obviously Eli was, what, in his second year. And I'm saying to myself, hey, man, if he's half as good as his brother, then we're going to have a pretty good team, pretty good offense. And we ended up just, you know, kept getting better each year. And um, I wish I could have won in Pittsburgh because when I left in 05, they go to the Super Bowl and win it. Right. Right. And I'm saying to myself, I say, this team was so good that I was on that they won a Super Bowl without me. Yeah. And I was like third in the, in the NFL and was second in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I might have ran off two, two, three Super Bowls. You got to think. In that five year period, we went to three AFC championship right. games. Right. And we were kids not really even understanding what we were doing. It's probably seven Hall of Famers on that football team. Wow. wow. Six or seven Hall of Famers on I that team. I see that. And you're just like, you know, you're living a dream, you know, you're playing, you're trying to build a career, a legacy. And if we could have just all just stayed together, there's no telling what that team could have been. But, uh, man, I, when, I, when they won one, I said, you know what, I got to go get me a chip. Yeah, I, get it. I don't know how I'm going to get it done, but find a way to get it done. And then 07. Yeah. 07, it comes down the pipe. It comes down the pipe, man. How's that, how did that feel to get that dub, man? Oh, man. I missed y'all about one year. You did? I came with y'all in 06, yeah. and y'all won it in 07. Yeah, man. It was, um, man, I remember it like, it, it, I, don't, I don't think that, 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 I don't think I felt my feet hit the ground wow. during that game, man. You hit that feel, and uh, all that stuff. All them things you dream of as a as a as a kid is like right there in front of you, uh -huh. and if it'll scare the shit out of you, man. yeah, it really will. And I can see how people get to that stage and freeze up and go on the tank. Um, I've, I've seen it happen, and um, so just being there, man. And I remember after the first series, we got we kicked the field goal, we go up three zero in our first possession, and I come to the sideline and I'm just like. I'm breathing so hard and I'm saying to myself, I said, oh my God. I say, I'm running as fast as I can and I can knock it over. Yeah. That's how fast the game was. And I look up and down the I look up and down the bench. Nobody's talking to nobody. Everybody's face is like so locked in to what's going on. And I'm like, man, this is the most physical football game I've ever been a part of. And it was, I mean. And, every, and everything about that game was just so sound. It was just, 
I mean, if I had to be at 12 yards, I was stepping on 12 and a half. You know, if I was supposed to, if I was in like a crack split from the from the tackle and it was six, I was right on the six. There was no freelance. You were doing exactly what you were told to do to the T as the best as you possibly could. Yeah. Like, you know, during the regular season, you'll cut a slant short, a step short, or, you know, run a curl two yards short or whatever the case may be. But not in that game. It was uh, it was it was a special feeling. I'm gonna ask you one more question. We're gonna yeah. wrap this up. Yeah. In the end, you had your ups, you had your downs. Yeah. I don't even need to touch on like some of the stuff. People, are like, oh, why didn't you talk about this? Why didn't you talk about that? It's right. not necessary. At another point in time, maybe we'll talk about it when we do the the, the up on game documentary yeah. of, of Plexico Burris. But the question I always ask at the end of every single interview is, when it's all said and done, and everybody has to give their, they, they have to give their feelings on who Plexico Burris meant to them. What do you want, what would you like for your legacy to be? How would you want to be remembered when that time comes? Oh man, that's kind of tough. You know what I mean? I competed. I fought my ass off to get there and to have the success I had. I fought for that. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. A fighter. I fought for it. So it was it was earned. It wasn't bought. Oh hell. It was it wasn't ain't, sold. Ain't it was, nothing it was taken. Ain't nothing about that purchase. It was to the core. Yeah. I believed in it. But nobody else did when they thought it was a joke. I fought for that. Yeah. Sure. Stretch Armstrong Absolutely. is what I call him. Y'all might call him Plexico Birds. Some of us call him Super Bowl Chan. For me, for Plexico, it's another exciting edition. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, check out the podcast, everything that we got going on with Up On Game, Up On Game Presents. This is Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. Thanks to our sponsor, Pacematic, for making this all possible. Till next time, we'll talk to you.